For many people, the Eid is a time of celebration, a festival. Not unlike Christmas for the Christians. Gifts are exchanged, time is spent in the playgrounds, the parks, the beaches, etc. It's a day of celebration. And it's not to say that Islam is against enjoyment and happiness. Islam is the way to ultimate enjoyment and happiness. But we don't want to lose the spirit of Eid. As happened to the Christians with Christmas. Because the Eid fundamentally is a reaffirmation of Ramadan. It is a reaffirmation of the basic principles and elements of Ramadan itself. The three basic principles are or were the establishment of prayer, charity, and the faith community. These are the main three elements. The establishment of prayer, charity, and the faith community. That is why Eid began with Salatul Fajr. That was the day of Eid. The first thing we did on that day was Salatul Fajr. That's what we were supposed to do. For those people who spent the night in celebration and missed Salatul Fajr, they just undermined their whole Eid. I'm not going to say that the Eid had no value, but they just sabotaged their Eid. Those who missed Salatul Fajr on the day of Eid. And there were many. The numbers I saw during Ramadan for Salatul Fajr, I didn't see on the day of Eid. They were preparing to come for Salatul Eid, but which was the most important? Salatul Fajr or Salatul Eid? Salatul Fajr. So, the most important element of that day was lost for many. Salatul Fajr was reinforced for those 29 days, every single day, Salatul Fajr. And that's why the masjids were full. It was reinforced by the principle of delayed suhoor. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said <clears throat> that the ummah would be in success as long as they delayed their suhoor and hastened their iftar. Delayed their suhoor and hastened their iftar. Why? What is the issue about delaying suhoor? <clears throat> because the delay of suhoor ensures fajr. That's the point. It's not about that meal. Yeah, you could eat the meal earlier, 
It's the same meal. The meal doesn't change in terms of the time. Whether you do it delayed or you do it early or you do it in the middle of the night, whatever. But the Prophet ﷺ stressed delayal of that suhoor. Delay it. To the last minute, your suhoor ends with the adhan of fajr. That is the best suhoor. Ending with the adhan of fajr. Why? Because then it's easy to go from there to the masjid. You're up already, everything is in place. Very easy to go and pray Salat al-Fajr. Salat al-Fajr, which is normally the most difficult Salat. Salat al-Fajr, which is normally the most difficult Salat. About which the Prophet ﷺ had said the distinction between the believers and the hypocrites is Salat al-Fajr. Salat al-Fajr. So that delayed suhoor reinforced Salat al-Fajr throughout Ramadan. Salat al-Fajr. And we all know the importance of Salat. Salat in Islam. After the declaration of faith, it is the first thing which is obligatory on us. If we fail to establish the Salah, we have failed with our Islam. We can fast every Ramadan, make Hajj, give Zakah, everything else, but if we don't pray, there is no Islam. Salatul Fajr. So the Eid began with Salatul Fajr, the day of Eid. Then, before we pray Salatul Eid, and Salatul Eid is also reinforcement of Salah, Salah in, in Jama'ah, but primarily Salatul Fajr, this is the principle of establishing worship of Allah as the foundation of our day. We enter into every day based on the worship of Allah. So, Salat al-Fajr stressing also the importance of the goal of fasting and Salat al-Fajr. That the goal of fasting, Allah said what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you would increase in God consciousness. That you would gain a consciousness of Allah. Which would protect you from evil. What did Allah say in the Quran about Salah? He said, Aqim is Salah li dhikri. Establish the Salah in order to remember me, to have a consciousness of me, to be conscious of me. So the same goal the fast, the Salah. But before we go on to do Salatul Eid, we are obliged to give charity. We are obliged to give charity. That charity was the implementation of the charitable nature which the fast was supposed to create in us. Because as we were fasting, hungry, thinking about those who were not fasting because they chose to fast, but because they had no food, those who are starving around the world. That was supposed to motivate us to want to help them 
to empathize, to sympathize with them. That principle of sympathy and empathy was then translated into action by Zakatul Fitr, Sadaqatul Fitr, which had to be given before the Eid prayer. If it was given after the Eid prayer, it's just general sadaqa. Better you do it, but you lost the reward, the great reward of sadaqatul fitr. So that was the second principle. Charity, feeding the needy. And you know that charity, we have zakah. The principle of zakatul fitr is different from zakah. Both of them involve charity, obligatory. But zakah is for those who have wealth, the wealthy amongst us, relatively wealthy. You have wealth which you have not used for a year, you pay zakah on it. You're a, you've got surplus wealth. So that zakah is for the wealthy. But zakatul fitr is for everybody. As long as you have enough to give a plate of food to somebody else, you must pay your zakah. It's for everybody. So it's telling us that the principle, this is not a thing for the wealthy. It is about a charitable nature. It is about generosity. Giving from what you have. That even the people who would normally receive zakah throughout the year, they would receive zakah, these people are required to give. Because no matter how poor you are, there are people who are poorer. That the poor would also recognize Allah's bounties and mercy on them. So this was the spirit. Of course, what has happened is that we have lost this spirit and understanding of what is involved. And it has been replaced by the Christmas spirit, giving gifts. So this is the day you give gifts, everybody gives you gifts and you give gifts to your kids and it's a day of exchanging gifts, but that's not what Eid is about. Not to say to give a gift. It's not good. Prophet ﷺ said, give gifts and build love. Give gifts and build love. It builds love. But that was not the primary principle of the Eid. But this for many of us is what has it become. It's like Christmas. The kids are all waiting. We just don't have a Christmas tree. But the kids are all waiting. Where's my idea? Where's my Eid gift? You know, like my Christmas present. So it is important that we teach our children the true message of Eid. That message of generosity, of sharing, sharing with others and not get lost in the present giving. Very important. The third element, the element of the faith community. What unites Muslims all over the world? We all fasted together. All around the world. The whole world got a message. 
the Muslim community was fasting. We were united by that principle of faith, fasting for one month every year. Salatul Eid was a reinforcement of that community. We didn't pray Salatul Eid in our local mosques, maybe some places where they didn't have a place large enough to hold the prayer, they did it in some mosques. But in general, Salatul Eid is prayed in open area. Musalla al Eid. Eidgah. Whatever. This is the place now where the people who normally prayed in their local masjid, who then pray in the biggest masjid of their area for Juma, now go to this larger area beyond the Juma where all the people were praying Jumas, they all now come to this area and pray together. This is the faith community. Reviving the faith. That bond of faith. Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. That bond of faith which holds us and unites us, which goes above nationality, nation, tribe, etc. Though to a certain degree, we can see elements of tribalism in the Eid greetings after the Salah. All the Pakistanis give greetings to Pakistanis. All the Filipinos give greetings to the Filipinos. And even amongst the Filipinos, the Tausugs do it together. And the Maranao do it together. We see this. Indians gathering, giving, sharing. That's not a good sign. It's a sickness. It's a sickness. Not a good sign. For me, I greeted everybody. And if there were Jamaicans, I would not have been just hanging out with Jamaicans anyway. So it's not by default. But the people of all the different communities, they greeted me. But that's how it should be for everybody. We, be, we greet everybody, everybody who's next to us, everybody who's around us. Not just go looking for our Indian brothers or Pakistani brothers, Filipino brothers. Go greet them now and eat. It's not to say we cannot also communally gather, you know, have something together for our communities, whatever. No harm. But the Eid, after Salatul Eid, that faith community gathering, we break down now into tribalism. Immediately after the Salah. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. And when we have our gatherings, we should invite people from the other groups. Don't let it be a Pakistani thing. Or an Indian thing. Or an Egyptian thing. Don't let it be that. If you do, Shaitan has won. Shaitan has succeeded in sabotaging the Eid. So these are thoughts that we need to take away from Salatul Eid, our Eid day. To reflect on, there's another Eid coming up. Let us not repeat the mistakes of this Eid in that Eid. Or next year after Ramadan. 